There's, there's no end to this whole, whole field. You can start off on an Estes rocket and you can finish with an Estes rocket. You can start with the Estes and work your way up to uh, a rocket that might be going 300,000 feet. The larger the rocket doesn't mean a, a higher budget. This means more creativity, especially in this case. <laughs> well, this is a rocket called Star Chaser. It more or less has several different sizes. The booster itself, this is 12 inches in diameter, carries up into the payload section, and then you have a transition down to a five and a half inch tube, and then it goes back up into uh, another transition and it comes out in its final diameter of seven and a half. The nose cone fits onto the top of the, the actual payload section itself. And you can pretty much put anything you wanted in this rocket. This, this nose cone at one time actually had cameras in it. The inside of the booster section it's made from a seven and a half inch diameter body tube. Uh, this particular case, going from 12 inches and necking down and then coming back up, I wanted to have a little bit more structure than just trying to figure out how to join a 12 inch tube. So there's some centering rings that are in, in, inside throughout the entire body. The top section just slides into here with the normal coupler. There's a centering about every six inches throughout the entire rocket until you get to the fins where there's one on this particular rocket every four inches. Uh, the actual diameter is, is brought up by a sono tube, which is typically used for concrete forming, for making piers and pilings. Around that was a few layers of fiberglass, but then I wanted to not have to sand a lot. When you get into having to sand a tube 12 inches in diameter will take a while. So this actually has an aluminum skin that's been attached to it. The fiberglass takes contact cement very well. It was just contact cemented, and then the aluminum skin was wrapped around it. Uh, it, it it's held its form fairly well. It dents easily, but then when you look at the structure behind it, there's fiberglass, there's bulkheads, there's a cardboard tube, and then you have a phenolic tube on the inside. The whole thing's held together by overlap after overlap of different types of materials. Something for this size, with the, the fins are usually a problem trying to keep weight down. And on this particular uh, fin, there was a one inch blue board, which is used typically for insulation on the sides of homes. On the blue board, there was layers of fiberglass overlaid in different angles and then pressed together. Uh, all the excess resin and try to get out all the air bubbles as much as possible are squeezed out of it. It's more or less pressure laminated. And you, what you come up with is a, just a hollow core fin that weighs about a pound and a half when you compare it to a wood or, or a true fiberglass fin that might weigh 10 pounds or plus. They're mainly just flat. A lot of your, your aer aerodynamic shapes are are left off of this particular fin. It wasn't made for, for high performance. It was made for, for more show than it, than it was speed. It goes up really gracefully. It's a slow moving rocket. You see it from start to finish. The motors that are in there create a lot of noise. People get excited and it, it's, it's a fun flight. You see it leave the ground and you see everything happen right in front of you. The weight of the entire rocket fully loaded, ready to go, is over 120 pounds. So something small really won't cut it. An M1939, which is a full, a full M motor, uh, really barely gets it off the ground to what it should be like. Most of the rockets take off really fast. This one, you could walk up to it and, and stop it before it left the rail. Uh, uh, no. This particular flight though, we're going to use a couple extra motors included with the M, and these are K700 cases. Just a little bit of extra power. We wanted to go a little bit higher, a little bit harder. It's still going to be a slow moving rocket, but it's going to be twice as loud, twice the amount of flame, twice the amount of smoke. Uh, total power of all three of the motors are actually into 
into an N-class motor. So what you wind up with, with the two Ks and an M, is an N, when, when, when you figure out the total Newtons. Total Newtons, around 15,040 Newton seconds. So it's about a mid-N. Uh, if my wife's watching, I think I got $56 in it. That includes the paint for the nose cone. Other, otherwise, it's a, it, it, the whole rocket uh, probably ran about $600 just to build it. A lot of time, the transitions are made from foam, fiberglass, and a little bit of Bondo. Painted it with an automotive paint just to have a nice durable finish on it. Being that the, the skin of the, of the rocket is actually aluminum, it, it painted out fairly nice at first. And the motors, again, if the wife is watching, $56. But an M1939 will run you about $499 retail. And then the K700s are around $115 each. So we've got a little over $700 just in fuel for seven and a half seconds of maybe seven and a half seconds. It's, it's still a fun, fun hobby. Something like this, most people won't fly on a weekly or monthly basis. It's a once a year flight. And the last time this one flew was two years ago. So it's time to come out of the closet with it and just show it off again. Just judging off of what I know what it does on the M and what 2Ks should do. We're probably looking at around 4,700 4, to 5,000 feet. And it's going to be slow, but it'll get there. The main chute for this sits up into the top section, and it's a 19 foot experimental chute from, from Rocket Man. It doesn't really have a drogue chute, but uh, going to that altitude, I don't want it to just free fall, so I'm going to put on a nine foot chute for when it breaks apart at apogee, it can come down a little bit softer than what it normally would. Usually I'll just let it fall. It only has to drop a thousand feet and the main chute will come out. This time it'll fall close to 3,000 feet and then the main chute will come out. And I, don't, I just don't want it to go too fast. Coming down too fast is really bad. Definitely start off small. You can really become uh, saddened or a good word for disappointed. You can become disappointed fairly, fairly easy if something goes wrong, if you spent a lot of money on a larger rocket and it just didn't work the way you wanted it to. Starting off small doesn't mean that you know, you're not playing with the big boys because there's a lot of small rockets out there that have more power in them than you'd think was available for that size of a rocket. A three or four inch size rocket is, uh, is respectable. An, an M is four inches in diameter. An M in a four inch rocket really moves. You, you've really got to hold it together for it to, to take a good flight. But if you have that rocket, you can build on a three inch motor base or a 54 inch motor base. You can, you can learn all, the, all what you need to know to, to go to the next level. You don't need to start big, you don't really need to start real small. If you want to go something comfortable to what you can really afford and what you can build. If you have very little building experience, of course you'd want to start smaller, smaller motors. Uh, building a big rocket or building a little rocket, it's all the same, just one's bigger. One's bi this rocket was no different than some of the other rockets you may see that are just uh, you know, an inch in diameter. It's just a lot heavier, and there's a lot more glue. <laughs> 